This is Jeremy Clark of jeremybytes.com, and today I want to talk about something that's kind of been bugging me in C Sharp for a while now. And that is the question, why do you have to return a task whenever you await something in a method? Pretty much everything I've seen says, well, that's the way it is, get used to it. That's never really sat well with me, and I actually came up with an example that helps me understand it a little better, and it might help you as well. So let's flip over to the code and see what I'm talking about. Here I have two methods. I have a getPerson method and a getPerson async method. The getPerson method has no asynchronous code in it. So in the first line, we call a getPeople method, which returns a list of person objects. Then we use the single method from link to get an individual based on an ID property. And then we return that person. And as expected, the return type for the getPerson method is in fact a person. But let's look at getPerson async. This method is almost the same. The difference is that the first line we call getPeopleAsync, an asynchronous method that returns a task. When we await that, we do get the list of person that we're expecting. And then the next two lines are the same. We use the single method to get an individual item, and then we return that person. But here's where things are different. Even though I am in fact returning a person object, the signature for my getPersonAsync method is task of person. Now I really like await, and it does handle a lot of the complexity for me, but this one piece that leaks out where I have to return a task makes me a little bit uneasy, especially since it doesn't match the return type from my code. But to better understand what's going on, let's make another method that does not use await and just uses task manually. So here's the signature I would like. Public returning person, and we'll call this get person async with task, and it will take an ID as a parameter, just like our other methods. But this time we will not await the getPeopleAsync method. And to see what's coming back, I'm going to use a little trick that I use to help Visual Studio help me. So I'll use var result equals getPeopleAsync. And then if I hover over the var, this will tell me what's coming back from this method. So in the first line, we see that this is a task of T result. And then down at the bottom, we see T result is a list of person. So this is telling me that this returns a task of list of person. So let's be a little more explicit with this. So this returns a task of list of person, and we'll rename this to people task. Now what we would normally do with this task is set up a continuation. And a continuation is a block of code that we would like to run after this initial task is completed. And for this, we'll use a Lambda expression. Now inside this Lambda expression, the task parameter represents the people task that we have above. And then the body of the Lambda is the code that we want to run after that initial task is complete. Well, my first step is to get the list of person objects out, which we'll name people. And that comes from the result property on the task. We can use that result property directly in our code, but I like giving it a friendlier name so it's easier to tell what's going on. Now the rest of our continuation is going to match what we have in our other method. So I'm going to copy and paste that down below. So now what I've done is I've called the getPeopleAsync method, which gives us back a task of list of person. And then I've set up a continuation on that task that will pull out the result, the list of person, and then use the single method to pull an item out. But we do have a problem at this point. We are returning a selected person, but we're returning it inside the continuation. So the next thing we have to deal with is how do we get this out? Well, it turns out that continue with does return a value. So let's see what that is. So we'll say var result equals people task dot continue with. And then again, I'll let Visual Studio help me by telling me what this is. So this says we have a task of T result and T result is person. So what we're getting back from this is a task of person. And now that we have this result, we can return it from our method. But now we do have a problem because the result that we're returning down at the bottom is a task a person, and our method signature says we're supposed to be returning a person. Well, we can fix our method by wrapping our person in a task. And this gives us an asynchronous method that other people can use. So someone else can call get person async with task and either get the task back and do something else with it or await the method and get the person out of it. The main thing to take away is that this is how we deal with tasks when we're doing it manually. So now that we've seen this, let's go back to our getPersonAsync method above. 
When we use a wait, the compiler hides a lot of things from us, including the tasks that we would otherwise have to deal with directly. And a way that we can think about this is that everything after the await is put into a continuation by the compiler. Now, technically what the compiler does is a lot more complex, but from a developer perspective, that's the way we can think about it. And if we do approach it that way, it makes perfect sense that the getPersonAsync method would need to return a task of person. Now, I will admit that when I use await, there is still a little bit of cognitive dissonance that I have. And that's because the return type that I have is of type person, but the signature is a task of person on the method itself. But if I do think about this as if I were to handle this manually, I'd have a task coming back. Now it makes much more sense to me. And hopefully that'll help it make some more sense to you as well. If you want some more information on how to use task manually, check out the links below. I do have resources for that. And if you'd like to learn more about delegates and Lambda expressions, I have links for that as well. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.